Hi there, Paper Crafters. Thanks for joining us at Paper Crafters Corner. Today we're going to be working on a tutorial for a packing tape transfer. And if you're not familiar with what this is, it's very simple. You take an image on a printed piece of paper, you apply packing tape over the top of it, you wet it from the back, and the next thing you know you have an acetate of your image. It's actually a very cool technique and we're going to build on what Monica shared with us in her last post using Dover clip art. So the first thing to note is that you can use clip art in things like Photoshop Elements or Photoshop uh, and Word. You can also use it in Microsoft PowerPoint, but you can also just right click and copy clip art and put it into a notepad uh, or into an email and just print it out. Any way that you have of printing a document, you can use clip art. It's very, very simple. If you need more information on that, uh, we will reference the blog that Monica did showing how to use uh, Photoshop Elements and Microsoft Word. It'll be right down there at the bottom uh, at the end of the video. And that way you can link through and learn exactly how she got those clip art images from her download to a printed form. So we're going to get started today. I used Microsoft PowerPoint and I found that it was very easy. Uh, and I did use an inkjet printer to print this out. Now, a lot of people will claim that you can only do this on a laser jet, like a laser printer, or that you would have to take it to your copy shop and have them copy it on one of the big expensive copiers. However, I found that it worked just fine with an inkjet printer. I'm using an HP inkjet printer and I just use standard photocopy paper, uh, nothing special. You could probably use cardstock, but it will take you a lot longer to get the paper off the back of the image. So I recommend using just regular copy paper and we'll go ahead and get started. So the first thing that you're gonna need is you're going to need your images. So in this case, I've printed out two images. Again, these are Dover clip art and we've got this adorable little girl for Halloween. And then we've also got this other adorable little girl who is, uh, looks like mixing a fire with some Halloween greetings um, akin to uh, roasting marshmallows. So these are the two images that we're going to do today. And then the other things that you'll need is you'll need a spray bottle. I like these small spray bottles. Ranger makes some of these. They work really well. And you'll want to fill it with just water. And then you'll need some packing tape. Um, I have a packing tape gun because that's what we use for packing things that we're sending out. Uh, but if you just want to buy a small roll of packing tape, that will work just as well. And you just want clear packing tape. Uh, this is Scotch brand, which is the only brand that I use. Um, and But, you know, I imagine you could use other brands as well. You'll just have to try it and see how it works. And then the last thing is you'll want some paper towels on hand. And the reason is because as you spray this, they're going to get fairly saturated and you want to be able to absorb the water on your work surface. So we're going to start with our first image. We're going to start with this little girl here. And all you're going to do is you're going to lay it down and apply packing tape. So the first step is to just lay the packing tape right over the top. And what you're going to notice is that the packing tape doesn't go all the way across your image. When you put the next piece of packing tape on here, you want to overlap it. Because if you put it right down the middle, then you're going to basically have two separate images. So you want to put your other piece of packing tape just overlaying the first one by just a bit. Okay, so now we've got two pieces of packing tape side by side laid out and now we're going to burnish it. And I think that this is probably a very important part of this process. So I would take something like a bone folder. This is a bone folder here. If you've never seen one, um, they are a great little tool to have for lots of different things. If you have a scoreboard, you have a tool that's very similar to a bone folder and you may even be able to use that. Otherwise, you can use the side of an old credit card or an old gift card and or the side of a long pair of scissors. And all you're gonna do, let me move the tape gun, is you're going to burnish this just like this. And as you're doing that, you'll notice that the dark areas will get darker. That's how you can tell that you've got it fully burnished. If you see some splotchy dotted looking areas, you don't have it completely burnished down on your design. 
So you want to burnish it very well and make sure that you've got all of the tape really well adhered to your image. And it just takes a couple minutes to do this. And I'm going to show you a close up. So if you look here, I don't know if you can see this, but this area is much darker than this area, even with a color difference. This area here has been burnished and this hasn't. So you'll be able to tell when you start burnishing it whether or not your image is fully adhered. And this just makes sure that there's no air bubbles in your image and that the paper is adhered. And that I like to go back over the whole thing like this and just make sure it's fully adhered. Okay, so now once you've got this fully adhered, take out a pair of scissors and you're just going to want to trim around your image. Now I like to trim all the way right up into the image so that I don't have any white on the edge, but depending on what your image is, you may want to trim outside and leave a little bit of a white border. If you are making something that you want to look like an old Polaroid or like an old 60s or 70s photo, then you might want to leave a little bit of an edge. And we're just going to trim all the way around this. Okay, throw away our trash. And now we've got our little image fully burnished. Okay, so our next step is that we're going to lay it on some paper towels. And we're going to spray with water. And you want to really saturate this. It really needs to get wet for that to pop up. And it's going to curl up a little bit. That's okay. Just hold it down and keep spraying. You want to get the paper really saturated. And another tip that I'll give you is when you print your image out, let it sit for quite a while before you try to do the transfer, before you put the tape on it. You want that ink to be really, really dry and really uh, set into the paper. So you'll start to see that we've got some of the image coming through here. We're just going to put a little bit more water on there. And then I like to just rub around, make sure that the image is coming through everywhere. And you'll start to feel the paper pull. Okay, as soon as you feel that happening, then you're ready to start taking the paper off. Make sure you get all the edges really saturated so that the paper comes off of them. And then you're just going to start rubbing with your finger in a circular motion. And you'll start to see that the paper is coming up. Just like that. And you're just going to keep on rubbing until you've got all the paper off. And it may take a couple tries. You may have to do this once, let it dry a little bit, add some more water, and do some more. Now in this case, just as the last time I did it, most of this paper is coming off in fairly big sheets. And I don't know if that's just the paper that I'm using or the packing tape that I used, um, but it's coming off in, in fairly big chunks, which is pretty great. makes it a lot quicker. You can also take this into a sink and do it that way if that's easier for you. If you don't want to have the wet mess in your craft room, you can just take this whole image in and wet the back of it uh, underneath the faucet. The only caution I will give you is that when you do that, you want to make sure, let's move our mess here, you want to make sure that you don't let that paper go down your sink because it could clog your drain. So we're just going to wet this one more time for these last stubborn bits of paper. Get them all off. And then I like to take another paper towel and just lightly brush over it. You don't want to set this paper towel on there because there's still going to be a little bit of adhesive on the back of this packing tape transfer. Believe it or not, it's still sticky as you can see. 
So you don't want to set a paper towel down because then you'll have to go through this process again. And what you end up with is this wonderful little packing tape transfer. And let me put a, uh, put something, oh, let's see. Let's put some paper behind it so you can really see it. So now you can see that you end up with this packing tape transfer and you can apply it of course to a piece of scrapbook paper or perhaps a card back if you want to make a card with it but what we're going to do today is we're going to apply it to a glass vase and I'm going to take my lighter and candle out of there and I'll do it this way so you can see and we're just going to put it directly on here and rub it down. Now in this case you're seeing a little bit more of this seam. On the ones that I did previously the seam, I'll show you on this side, was not quite as obvious and that's because I did a little more off-centered. You still see the lines which in this case because this is a vintage image and it looks a little bit more vintagey with those extra lines and scratches in the image um, that's going to work perfectly but I think that if you've got an image that you really don't want that to show then you may want to print it out the size of your packing tape or offset your tape so that it's not coming straight down the center of your image. And then once you have this done, put this image onto the glass and you can use Mod Podge or uh, any of your favorite uh, adhesives that you like to use and you're going to have this wonderful image on your vase. So let's see what that would look like. Get our candle turned on. It's going to be a little bright in here probably to see it. But you could certainly make this in a small style and then put your, um, put your little candle behind it and it would definitely stand out. And again, so now you can see that it glows behind your image. Thanks so much for joining us today. Again, this is a Dover Pictura clip art that they provided for this project. And if you'd like to get some images to try this out yourself, you can visit our website at www.papercrafterscorner.com. And on the right-hand side of the website, on the home page, you will find a Dover clip art ad. If you click on that, you'll be entitled to three free images. No obligation, you don't need to buy anything. Just click on that and it'll take you right to where you can sign up to get those images. And then you can try a project like this yourself. So thanks so much for joining us today, and I hope you have a wonderfully creative and paper crafting day. Bye-bye.